So year four class, we're going to read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And I will scoop past this first bit. There's the content. Oh, and we're going to start with chapter one. Lucy looks into a wardrobe. Once, there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund and Lucy. This story is about something that happened to them when they were sent away from London during the war because of the air raids. They were sent to the house of an old professor who lived in the heart of the country, 10 miles from the nearest railway station and two miles from the nearest post office. He had no wife and he lived in a very large house with a housekeeper called Mrs. McCready and three servants. Their names were Ivy, Margaret and Betty, but they did not come into the story much. He himself was a very old man with shaggy white hair which grew over most of his face as well as on his head and they liked him almost at once. But on the first evening when he came out to meet them at the front door he was so odd looking that Lucy, who was the youngest, was a little afraid of him and Edmund who was the next youngest, wanted to laugh and had to keep on pretending he was blowing his nose to hide it. As soon as they said goodnight to the professor and gone upstairs on the first night, the boys came into the girls' room and they all talked it over. We've fallen on our feet and no mistake, said Peter. This is going to be perfectly splendid. That old chap would let us do anything we like. I think he's an old dear, said Susan. Oh, come off it, said Edmund who was tired and pretending not to be tired, which always made him bad-tempered. Don't go on talking like that. Like what? said Susan. And anyway, it's time for your time you were in bed. Trying to talk like mother, said Edmund. And who are you to say when I'm to go to bed? Go to bed yourself. Hadn't we all better go to bed, said Lucy. There's sure to be a row if we're here if we're heard talking here. No, there won't, said Peter. I'll tell you, I tell you, this is a sort of house where no one's going to mind what we do. Anyway, they won't hear us. It's about ten minutes walk from, down, from here down to that dining room and any amount of stairs and passages in between. What's that noise? said Lucy suddenly. It was a far larger house than she had ever been in before and the thought of all those long passages and rows of doors leading into empty rooms was beginning to make her feel a little creepy. It's only a bird silly said Edmund. It's an owl said Peter. This is going to be a wonderful place for birds. I shall go to bed now. I say let's go and explore tomorrow. You might find anything in a place like this. Did you see those mountains as we came along? And the woods, there might be eagles, there might be stags, there'll be hawks. Badgers, said Lucy. Snakes, said Edmund. Foxes, said Susan. But when next morning came, there was a steady rain falling, so thick that when you looked out of the window, you could see neither the mountains nor the woods, nor even the stream in the garden. Of course it would be raining, said Edmund. They'd just finished breakfast with the professor and were upstairs in the room he'd set apart for them. A long, low room with two windows looking out in one direction and two in another. Do stop grumbling, Ed, said Susan. Ten to one, it'll clear up in an hour or so, and in the meantime, we're pretty well off. There's a wireless and lots of books. Not for me, said Peter. I'm going to explore in the house. Everyone agreed to this. And that was how the adventures began. It was the sort of house that you never seemed to come to the end of, and it was full of unexpected places. The first few doors they tried led only to spare bedrooms, as everyone had expected that, that they would. But soon they came to a very long room full of pictures, and there they found a suit of armour. And after that was a room all hung with green, with a harp in one corner, and then came three steps down and five steps up, and then a kind of little upstairs hall, and a door that led out onto a balcony, and then a whole series of rooms that led into each other, and were lined with books, most of them very old books, and some bigger than a Bible in a church. And shortly after that, 
they looked into a room that was quite empty except for one big wardrobe. The sort that has a looking glass in the door. There was nothing else in the room at all except a dead blue bottle on the windowsill. Nothing there, said Peter, and they all trooped out again. All except Lucy. She stayed behind because she thought it would be worth while trying the door of the wardrobe even though she felt almost sure that it would be locked. To her surprise, it opened quite easily and two mothballs dropped out. Looking inside, she saw several coats hanging up, mostly for long fur coats. There was nothing Lucy liked so much as the smell and feel of fur. She immediately stepped into the wardrobe and got in among the coats and rubbed her face against them, leaving the door open, of course, because she knew that it would be very foolish to shut shut oneself into any wardrobe. Soon, she went further in and found there was a second row of coats hanging up behind the first one. It was almost quite dark in there and she kept her arms stretched out in front of her so as not to bump her face into the back of the wardrobe. She took a step further in, then two or three steps, always expecting to feel woodwork against the tips of her fingers, but she could not feel it. 